My name is Connor Smith and I'm a ranger at Parks Victoria in Halls Gap in the Grampians. And we invited the Guardian here to uh, see what it's like as a day in the life of a ranger. And so we've been going out, touring around the park, showing what a real day is. I'm kind of one part of a whole. We have like our operations team handling a lot of maintenance, roading, that kind of thing within the park. We have our land, water and heritage team, so handling trapping, cameras, rock art. And then we also have our fire team. So the typical ranger day can literally involve all of those kind of teams, it's really always changing and there's always something else on. Earlier this morning, we had the opportunity to go with Jess Sharp. She's a ranger within the uh, Environment, Land, Water and Heritage team. She's really responsible for a lot of the pest management and uh, the data analysis. We've got 80 meters. Throughout the park, we have roadside cameras and we have bush cameras to get an idea of what's out there in the park. We need those cameras out there so we actually know how many of whatever pest species we're looking for, whether it be goats, deer, foxes, rabbits. We need to have that data in order to kind of controlling for that. Perfect. Stick like that and then shoot and hopefully get yeah, some okay. critters. So this is part of our Grampians Arc program, which is predator monitoring, where we're targeting specifically the activity of foxes and feral cats now. We have 75 cameras yeah. and they have to go out for 60 days at a time and that's every spring, summer, summer and autumn. It's a good excuse to get out in the park, so I love it. <laughs> in addition to Jess working on the pest management side of things, we also have weed management. So one of the main things that we're, we're looking into right now is sallow wattle. Definitely a pest species we have in the park. The leaves are the biggest giveaway. Why is it evil? These guys are little, but they spread quite rapidly and they produce a lot of different seeds. And then as it gets taller, it starts crowding out other species around it, right? So all the other kind of diversity, if you have your, you know, your tea tree and your other eucalypts, um, get crowded out and nothing can go there. So it actually changes the entire vegetation class. Grampians National Park sees you know, 1.3 million park visitors a year. So really between our management plan and how we're actually managing the land, it's a fine line between balancing how do we conserve the land in a state that's as good as it is right now and improve it for the future with an ever increasing demand for people wanting to enter it. Earlier today, we drove up to Reed Lookout and um, had actually had a walk through the balconies. One of the other things that, that happens during the busy holiday period is also is people jumping over barriers. So Instagram and social media has created you know, everyone wanting to go out with a cell phone camera and uh, get that specky shot. And with that, you're putting yourself at, at rather significant risk. We don't want to be out there penalizing people or kind of being seen as the bad guy or doing the negative thing. Like nobody likes getting a fine. The people who hand out fines don't like giving out fines. We have had incidents in the park where people do fall down cliffs and it's not only is it you know really harmful to them they're going to be injured and you're putting emergency services also at risk having to go over to get you. We had a geotechnical engineer sound out sound out the balconies there kind of the jaws and um, he deemed it unstable for for people to be out there continuously so it could be there 10 years but it also could fall next month or even now if somebody were down on that, so we had to kind of close it off. When we were coming back from Baroka Lookout, I noticed <laughs> that there was some rubbish that was likely either thrown from a car that was still moving or they pulled over and quickly dumped it. It's unfortunately a thing that happens perhaps more than you'd like. Looking at that rubbish, I think we found a couple nappies, some different food sauces, some plates. It's the case of maybe having a sneaky nappy in the car and they want to get rid of it and they don't want to care of the park. But really we need to recognize that as soon as that bag rip opens, the wind blows it and throws it through the park. And then it becomes not just one bag, it becomes several different pieces of rubbish that if they're too far off track, they're not going to get picked up until they either break down or just get buried. I worked a variety of different positions. I worked in a plastics factory, I worked in demolition, I worked as a chippy, I worked all over the place. <laughs> Yet being a ranger is definitely my favorite job that I've ever had. It's one of the, I think it's one of those few jobs where people can kind of wake up and you know go to the place where they love. You get to work outside, you're working with great people, and really, yeah, you're doing something that you're passionate about.